for. Yesterday, when I showed up with the paperwork to, that, to serve him, he looks at it, he's like, my name is spelled wrong. I'm literally, like, all of a sudden, you care about the spelling of names now? Hey, Jesse, how you doing? Good to see you. That's for you? I'm serving you? I'll see you in court, okay? All right? I, I followed what you put down, okay? All right, Jesse, I'll see you around. By the way, hold up. When I was trying to cor correct you, you didn't care. All right. So anyways, my whole purpose of... Welcome to another episode of Don't Quote Me on the 27th Letter Podcast. My name is Landry on the Bay. I would look the other way, but I still haven't got my other camera back. I, I just been taking my time and getting it back. But that's besides the point. Let's get right to it. So this video is uh, it's about this incident that um, that's been ongoing with uh, with the Toronto Police uh, Service and some of the individuals that work within the Toronto Police Service. And um, so, on May 22nd, right, I was on my way at 2 a.m. traveling on, uh, in my conveyance uh, around 2.18 a.m. in the morning. I was going to um, to fulfill some duties that I'm, I'm supposed to do, and I was traveling on the Don Valley Parkway South. And um, if, you, if you're familiar with the Don Valley Park, Parkway, you know it's a windy road, it's a very snaky highway. And um, so when I got on it off of the 401 going south, I noticed to my right, right, right before Lawrence, because Lawrence was the first exit uh, after the after the. Actually, no, sorry, Lawrence is the second exit, you know, York Mills is the first one. Lawrence is the second exit after, after you merge on from uh, the 401. I noticed there's a little part where a uh, peace officer, a, a cruiser, a scout car could sit and just, you know, wait and watch people speeding. So, you know, I was just traveling and I noticed it and I kept on traveling, you know, didn't think nothing of it. There was only a couple of conveyances on, on the highway at that point. So I'm traveling, and sure enough, maybe a minute after I passed the cruiser, it was right behind me. There was a conveyance beside me that literally took off, like sped off. And I'm thinking to myself, oh man, that person's gonna get pulled over. Nope, that person was allowed to speed off. So for about the next, I'll say seven to eight minutes, which is how long it took before I eventually got pulled over. Usually, if a peace officer is going to pull you over for whatever infraction you did, they'll pull you over right away. But I didn't do nothing wrong. So this person, uh, this peace officer who I came to find, come to find out his name was is uh, Jesse Monahan, badge number one two three two four. He's part of the traffic service apparently. So he followed me, and while he, while I was traveling on uh, is a three lane highway. While I was traveling. Uh, in the in the middle lane, no, in the far far left lane. Actually, I was in the far left lane, uh, and so there's a wall, you know, a, a barrier. So I'm traveling there. So he pulls up behind me. He's just following me, not pulling me over for like again seven to eight minutes. Then in that seven to eight minutes, he just kept on hovering around me. He'll go behind me, he'll go beside me, he'll go behind me, back to beside me. This went on for a while. And I was, at that point, I was like, okay, if you're going to pull me over, pull me over. But he didn't really have no probable cause to pull me over. So eventually, which is dangerous, and I mean, we're on the highway, you know, the night, uh, traveling like 100 miles per, per hour, like, why would you just Follow me like that, you know. You could cause an accident, you know. Some there are people who are who, who get nervous with you guys around. And again, this could have, if I was a nervous type of person, that could have caused us to get into an accident. So, like I'm telling, I, I I kid you not. For seven to eight minutes, this man followed me. Eventually, when well, if you know how how long it takes from Lawrence 
okay, like I said, Lawrence to right before the exit of Richmond, he followed me all the way to Richmond. Finally, pulled me over, pulls me over, and my whole argument, he pulled me over without probable cause. And on top of that, they told my conveyance, okay, for 45 days. Anytime these guys pull me over now because of uh, a past remedial thing that I didn't do, which is another issue that I should have appealed when, when, when the incident first happened. Um, this is, I'll, I'll, at the end of this video, I'll put the video up of that incident, what happened. You know, so that that case got dismissed. I, I, I got charged with assault, peace officer, another one got pulled over without probable cause. I showed my ID and that one that led to a whole snowball of nonsense that happened. Right. But in the end, I got vindicated, except for one thing, which was they said I refused breathalyzer. But the reason why I refused breathalyzer back then, which was 2014, 2013, 2013 is because I got assaulted. You bring me to the police station, now you want to ask me for a breathalyzer after you assault me. I'm going to refuse, obviously. So, t on the technicality uh, thing, even though all those cases, I went to court for like a good year, two years, fighting that case, beat that assault that they claimed that I did. Meanwhile, they were the one that assaulted me. Like I said, I'm going to attach the video for, for, this, for that incident at the end of this video. You guys get caught up on that. So, on the technicality, because I refused, even though I brought somebody... Uh, to, to, to refute their claim that I had a drink or whatever the case may be. Like they said, uh, I came out of a bar and I must have been drinking, which I wasn't. I brought the, 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 the bartender to court and he testified on record saying he, he didn't serve me a drink at all. He didn't see me drink anything. Okay, so that, that should have been thrown out. But because I beat them in their own courtroom on these assault allegations, vindictively, they kept this refused breathalyzer and that turned into a whole remedial thing where I had to go, uh, um, I have to go to some class and so on and so forth. But back then I was so relieved of not having to face these charges or do time for these charges. And if you know my past, me getting charged with assault back then or getting convicted with assault of peace officer, these guys could have given me anywhere up to 10, 15 years for this thing. So I was relieved being that because I didn't do nothing wrong again. So I didn't even care about this remedial thing. I'm uh, refused breathalyzer conviction that thing. Turns out now with that remedial refused breathalyzer, anytime they pull me over, they now have the jurisdiction, according to them, to take my conveyance anytime they pull me over for four, and impound it for 45 days. Now each time, at each for, and for each day the car is the conveyance is impounded. It's seventy dollars a day. You do the math. All right. So, in the last three summers, okay, this is 2024 summer, so 2023 and 2022 summer, since 2022 summer, each summer, this has happened. Three different times, they impounded my conveyance, okay? 2022, I had to pay 3500 to get the, the conveyance back. Uh, last summer, I had to pay almost 4000 This This summer... Let it happen again um, uh, after this incident with uh, Jesse Monaghan. Uh, I had to pay almost $4,000. I'll show you the receipt. You know what I mean? Almost $4,000 to get this conveyance, the ransom, to pay for this ransom, to get this conveyance back. At this point, I'm, I'm fed up with these guys. You know, because, like, listen, you guys know my background already. I, I, if you guys don't know, you guys can check, it, check out the blogs I've been writing on 27letters.com. You can hear about... Some of, the, some, of my, some, of, some of the ordeals I have to deal with in trying to find proper employment. You know what I mean? Even like, it's ridiculous because I have this criminal background check that I can't pass. So I'm limit, limited with the jobs that I have, I, I can work. So like, I'm a simple man. So the little money that I make, I save, I save, I save, I save, you know? So right now, Financially, this has become a burden, and it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a financial uh, uh, um, assassination, or, 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 or that they want to they want to do, uh, you know, they want to pretty much make me go broke, you know, in doing this over and over again. Last three summers, you guys do the math. One one year is thirty five. Another one, one a year is four, uh, four, almost four thousand. This year is almost five thousand. You add it up. Like I said, I live simple. I don't make much money, so. M m 
the fiat that I make goes straight to savings, to, to taking care of my family, paying bills. I have three children. I have four altogether, but I have three children under my roof. You know, they they involve in extracurricular activities. One is into baseball. My daughter is into gymnastics. Uh, my son is doing karate. All these things cost money. Because of this financial uh, strain that they put on me, I had to remove my 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 daughter from gymnastics and my other son from from uh, um, karate because it's like I can't afford it. So this is really starting to affect me. Before you know, I, I'd absorb it. You know, and at that point, I wasn't too confident in uh, knowing what, what the route I want to go in dealing with this harassment that I've been dealing with for years upon years. So finally, this year, I had enough. I said, I'm going to file a lawsuit. So after this incident, when, when on, on May 22nd, and they, and they impounded the, the, my conveyance, and on top of that, I told you it was $70 per day. So May 22nd, they impounded the car. All right, the conveyance. By June, you know what they did? Out of nowhere, they raised it from $70 to $90. Again, it was a, it's a financial assassination they're trying to do with me. You know what I mean? Because they can't scare me. They can't do nothing. They tried everything. They locked me up with everything. They beat me up. Everything. So they're like, okay, let's go to see if we can hit him in his pockets every time. All of a sudden, it went from $70 to $90. So you know it's a personal thing with these guys. Okay, because I have uh, from the towing company, I have letters from the towing company stating it's $70. When it's time for us to go get the, the conveyance on, uh, on uh, July 6th, come to find out, it was a lot more expensive than what we anticipate, anticipated. And then we asked the, uh, the uh, JP towing, we asked JP, why is, it, why, was, why is it more than we expected? They're like, oh, as of uh, June 1st, out of nowhere, we didn't even know who, who did it, but they, they raised the price. Raised it, eh? I wonder who did that. Whose idea was that? Hmm? All right. So this is a personal thing at this point, and I'm tired of this with the Toronto Police Service. And, like, I'm not having it. This is my last attempt at diplomacy with you guys. It's like I'm not playing with you guys. It's, this, is, this has gone way too far. It's gone All right? way too far. So in towing the conveyance, again, for 45 days... Uh, for ninety dollars a day, I had to, you know, my son who goes to baseball, we had to, I had to Uber, you know. So that's again cost money. Uber there, Uber here. Yeah, I'll show you pictures. It's me and my sons, and my and my daughter in the conveyance traveling to baseball. You know what I mean? At least twice a week we did this. So on top of paying for the the, the impound impoundment, I I had to pay for Uber. So this, again, is getting out of hand with these guys, and I'm not going to stand for it anymore. So, uh, and Jesse Monaghan pulling me over without probable cause, he's violating my constitutional rights, um, my right to life, liberty, and secur security of person. Um, also, false imprisonment, imprisonment, uh, so basically, I started, I started uh, 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 the process, I began the process of filing a suit, which again, that one co that costs money to file this paper right here, this paper right here, it costs money for me to file the suit. It costs $240 just to file these papers, okay? So on, um, on July 13th, So on August on August second, um, I went to Superior Court, Civil Court, which is a, a Queen and University, and I started the process of of, of suing um, Jesse Monahan, um, badge one two three two four, and the Toronto Police Service, and um, this is the statement of claim. There's a lot of, you know, me learning on the go. You know, but again, man does not learn by being told. This is my first attempt at suing, and we're going to figure it out as, as we go. You know what I mean? But I'm fed up with these guys because, again, this is my last attempt at diplomacy. Anything that happens after this is out of my hands. It's not my fault. You can't blame me for nothing, okay? Because I've been dealing with too much with you guys, way too much harassment. And you guys have to think that you can just get away and do anything you want. 
but I have a right. The constitution, of, the constitution protects me. Okay, you guys are public servants. I know that for, for, for the average citizen, they look, they look at the government or people that work within the, within the de facto government like as know-it-all God, God-like figures, but not for me. I understand where, where it all uh, stands, stems from, where as far as where the power lies. The power lies with the people. It's we the people. And for a lot of people, they don't, they've forgotten. They're falling asleep. And they allow the, 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 these, 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 these highway men, these, these, these racketeers who are running a racket to run, run all over them, you know, but I refuse to go through this with them. So again, on August 2nd, I started paperwork and um, I had to, first I went on the 1st, then I went back on the 2nd because on the 1st when I went, I, I had to go back home to the drawing board, like I said, I had to learn, fix up some paper, uh, some, some wording, went back on the 2nd, made sure I was there super early. The, they open at 9. No, sorry. They open at, is it 9? Yeah, they open at 9. I was there at 8.15. Like, I greeted everybody that came in. That's how, that, like, I'm not playing. All right? So after I filed a paper, so I have to serve Jesse. Jesse was off that week, okay, of that, of August 2nd. He was off that week, and he just got back to work yesterday. Please, Constable Monahan. Oh, how are you doing, sir? Um, okay, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Um, what time are you working till? 7 o'clock. 7 p.m.? Why uh, would I, uh, what can I do for you? Oh, I just needed to serve you something. Um, when is your next shift? Tomorrow morning. What time? 8, uh, 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should, I, I think I probably could serve your supervisor. Because I'm going to be in the neighborhood uh, today. But it won't be okay. it won't be in the time that you're there. What's this regarding? Oh, um, you get it all in uh, on paper. Uh, uh, it's 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 about an incident that happened on uh, May twenty second. I don't know if you recall on the Don Valley Parkway. Uh, you'd have to jog my memory. Um, you pulled me over without probable cause and then told the conveyance. Remember? All right. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. Uh, once you get the paper, it will jog your memory. You can look up the, the, the file number and so on and so forth. Okay? Okay. Sure. All right, then. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye. If I don't see you today, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm sorry? If I don't see you today, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Yesterday, um, which was the... Um, yesterday was the 8th so he got back yesterday and I called ahead of time to find out what time he was working he started his shift at 8 p.m. I was there at 8.05 8.10 I would have been there sooner but I went to uh, police headquarters first because that's where I wanted to serve the Toronto Police Service service but they were already closed you know and the only reason why I didn't go during business I was getting because I was trying to serve Jesse Monaghan Peace Officer Matt Monaghan at, at when he starts start start work at 8 p.m. So when I got to police headquarters yesterday, they were already business hours was uh, was over. So I had to come back today, which was the ninth. I went back this morning. So yesterday I went to to where Jesse, Jesse was working, served him. Here's his picture. I told him exactly what's going on. All of a sudden, if you hear him, listen to this. On the side of the road, um, he wrote. Um, my, my, my appellation down without my title, you know, land ray only been the bay, bay is a title like doctor, sir, or whatever you want to, you know, it's a title so I asked him on the side of the highway that night and said, hey listen, can you please make sure you put the right spelling of my name, he's like, no, I'm going to go according to what they have okay, fine look, I have document, court documents you know what I mean, disclosure, with my name on it, Landry Onigbinde Bay. Here's a picture I show you. Here, here. This is from 2017. It's 2012. Yesterday, when I showed up with the paperwork to, to serve him, he looks at it, he's like, My name is spelled wrong. I'm like, All of a sudden, you care about the spelling of names now? Hey, Jesse, how you doing? Good to see you. That's for you. I'm serving you. I'll see you in court, okay? All right. I, I followed what you put down, okay? 
All right, Jesse, I'll see you around. By the way, hold up. When I was trying to cor correct you, you didn't care. All right. So anyways, my whole purpose of swing is, uh, is called um, professional malpractice. Okay? So that's, that's the grounds I'm suing them, suing them for. Professional malpractice. All right? So here is the receipt again. Here's the receipt of, of what it costs to, uh, that I paid for, for the... Um, to file the suit, uh, the suit, $243, okay? Right there, $243, just the receipt. And listen, I have my exhibits. I have all my exhibits ready for court, you know? These, these, these are things I, I didn't need to file. I just need to uh, bring, bring to court when we start, uh, court starts. Since I have exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, which is the letter from the Toronto Police Service themselves uh, notifying uh, us of, of where the conveyances of them towing the conveyance and so on and so forth. Uh, this is JP Towing Service. You can see in their letter, it says it's, it's gonna cost $70 a day. All of a sudden, they raised it up to 90. So I have it on paper that even did like, bro, they're messing with me. They're playing games. Again, trying to financially torpedo my, my whole flow. And that's exhibit D. And then exhibit E is, is the tow card that you get when, when they tow, when they tow the, uh, your car. And exhibit F is the receipt that I paid. All right? So the exact amount that I paid, sorry, it, wasn't, it was $4,864.65. $4, that's how much I paid. The car is only, the company is only worth maybe three to four grand. But for the last three summers, I've paid over, again, one year, 35. Last year, 4,000. 4, this year, almost 5,000 in getting this conveyance back. Okay? So, again, like, anybody would be fed up by now. Anybody. So, you can't blame me for being where, where I am with these guys. All right? So, today, I went to, um, to police headquarters. Went there, and um, I got there at 8 o'clock. Exactly at eight o'clock. Like I have, I took the subway down there. I have this is the, I have transfers. Where, where are the transfers? Where are the transfers? Look, I got there. I got off the subway at College Park at seven fifty nine. Took a receipt from uh, a transfer to show you. When I got there, these guys made me wait over an hour and a half, which I was fine with. I let them know, listen, I even brought my book ready to read because I'm not playing with you guys. But however long you want to, wherever, I got all the time in the world. By the time I left, it was 9.43. Unnecessarily just having me wait. But it is what it is. I'm game and I got time. You, like, I'm telling you, like, you guys got me started. Back, in, back before, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was going to court dealing with you guys. We went a few years without having any real interaction. But now with this whole financial aspect of things, you know, I'm just going to have to put my foot down. You know what I mean? Like, I got to do something. You know what I mean? I got to protect myself. I got to protect my, my family's well-being. Some of these things that we have planned to do, I can't because financially you guys are trying to handcuff me. You know? So, showed up to, showed up to uh, police headquarters today and... According to the clerk, when I initially filed a paper at Superior Court, they told me exactly, because they even highlighted it here, this is who you, you're supposed to serve. Aside from serving the peace officer, Jesse Monaghan, the other person you've got to serve is the mem a, 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 member, a member or office of the board or commission, right? So when I got there and I waited for an hour, finally somebody came down from the board and said, yeah, okay. I, gave it, I was about to give it to, to a lady. I believe her name is... Um, what is it? I can't remember. I can't read. read. D, D, D. Achim. I don't know. I can't remember the first name. Her, her, her name is D. Toronto Police Service Civilian. Her name is D. Achim. A-C-H-I-M, okay? Uh, badge number 83838, okay? 
Initially, I took a picture of her ID and she, she pleaded with me, don't post my ID because she didn't know who I am, don't publicize my ID. And the, her energy was so pleasant, I was like, you know, I honor that, but I will still speak on, I will still tell, tell you who she is. So, I, 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 so she, according to her, she's like, um, because she's part of the board, the board is not named, I only put Toronto Police Service, I, I have to give it to the Toronto Police Service, people that's a different entity. Like, whatever. So I'm like, okay, so bring down the person who I'm supposed to give this to. So a lady came down. Her name is Beth Gosnell. B-E-T-H-G-O-S-N-E-L-L. She's a clerk, a legal service clerk. All right? So she represents the Toronto Police Service. And she informed me that, you know, uh, I just need to add, add um, the chief of police to, uh, to, 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 to my suit. Because that's he, he's supposed to be included. So I wrote his name and initialed it, gave her the suit, gave, served her the paperwork. You know what I mean? So again, I'm just fed up with these guys. Um, I, this is my last attempt. I'm telling you, this is my last attempt at diplomacy. You know, this is not even about money. You know, it is again. You know, I want I want to be compensated for the injuries that's been caused. But this is bigger than just me. You know. Getting, getting, getting compensated. This is like I need to protect myself, and again, also, I need to teach the children that are coming up, especially my children, when it comes to these corporations, like these entities that think that could, they could just do whatever. It's like again, so many of us are falling asleep at the wheel as we, the people, that we just used to abuse. People want to turn the other cheek, you know. Whether you're Christian, Muslim, uh, 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 Jew whatever race or creed that you claim to be, or if you're more with a fez, everybody's doing the same thing, which is turn the other cheek when it comes to these guys. I'm not with all that. I'm not turning the other cheek. Like, I refuse to. Like, I, like you guys already know, I'm not scared of you. I'm not intimidated by any of the, any of the peace officers at all. All right? But at the same time, it's getting to the point where it's, it's starting to affect my livelihood. You know, and I, and I refuse to let that go on. So as far as I'm, as I'm concerned, I'm just waiting for them. They have 20 days to respond to my suit, and, and then we'll go, we'll go from there. You know, I'll keep you guys updated. Again, if you want to know about the previous issues that I had with these peace officers, just check out these two videos that, I'm, that, 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 that are here in, in this box somewhere around here. All right? Thank you again for joining me at 27 Letter Podcast. Have yourself... A bliss day. Peace.